This episode is brought to you by The Last Day on Earth Survival. Create your character and survive amongst a post-apocalyptic zombie wasteland. Rebuild civilization and construct a sanctuary out of the rubble to protect yourself from the undead and crazy raiders. Collect resources and craft new weapons, armor, and traps, starting with weak spears that upgrade into automatic rifles. Then take them to battle against the deadly threats that lurk around the wasteland. Take on bunkers where there is a boss to defeat, but remember to prepare by getting the right amount of weapons, clothes, and first aid kits. In Last Day on Earth, you can also take on the challenge of building vehicles like a fast motorbike and find a German Shepherd puppy and watch him grow into a big dog for company. Download Last Day on Earth via our link in the description below and play now. This US pilot shot down an American plane and got the kill. Why? War so often forces us to make the most difficult decisions that a person could ever have to make. American General Norman Schwarzkopf Jr. once said, The truth of the matter is that you always know the right thing to do. The hard part is doing it. And on February 10, 1945, over the island of Bataan in the Philippines, United States Army Flight Lieutenant Louis Edward Curtis was facing that dilemma. He was lining up his P-51 Mustang fighter, nicknamed Bad Angel, ready to shoot down a transport plane attempting to land at a Japanese-held airfield. His finger hovered over the firing button that would unleash a devastating burst of fire from his aircraft's six heavy machine guns. But while he knew it was the right thing to do, this experienced fighter ace with nine confirmed kills to his name was so very hesitant to push the firing button. Why was he so reluctant and taking so long to open fire? Only the night before, he had not a care in the world. He had gone on a date for the first time with a 19-year-old U.S. Army nurse he had just met. She was beautiful, sophisticated, but so down to earth. She was of Russian descent that gave her a wonderful air of mystery and had the glamorous name of Svetlana Valeria Shostakovich. Turned out that she had been an aspiring Hollywood starlet, having just had a small role in the smash hit musical film, Bathing Beauty, before giving it all up to do her patriotic duty for the war effort. Curtis smiled at the memory of her, and his mind focused on the terrible job at hand before him. So with a heavy heart, he aimed at one of the transporter's wing-mounted engines and opened fire. Almost instantly, it burst into flames, and its propeller moments later stopped spinning. But the plane was well built and of a sturdy design, maintaining its descent to land at the Japanese airfield at Bataan. So Lieutenant Curtis, with a grim resolution, now switched his plane's attention to the other side of the aircraft and fired at the other engine. Again, moments later, that engine too was engulfed in flames, with thick black smoke trailing from it. Now powerless, the plane started to plunge downward. Thankfully, its pilots successfully ditched it in the nearby sea. Lieutenant Curtis had just made his 10th kill by shooting down an American Army C-47 transporter. He had potentially murdered its crew and all of the passengers on board it. So who was Lieutenant Curtis and what events had forced him to take such drastic action? He had been born in Indiana in the United States on November 2nd, 1919. And in 1942, at the age of 23, he graduated as an Army fighter pilot. The following year, Curtis was sent to the war in Europe and served in both North Africa and Italy. There, he flew the twin-engine P-38 Lightning Fighter with great success and would amass eight confirmed kills in less than six months and was awarded two Distinguished Flying Cross Medals for bravery. On April 1943, he shot down three German BF-109 aircraft in Cape Bon in Tunisia. The next month, he shot down two more BF-109s near Valcidro in Sardinia. On June 24th, he ran into an Italian Machi C-202 and shot it down. In such a short amount of time, Curtis was a flying ace. In August 1943, he was in a large-scale dogfight with German fighter planes all over southwest Italy when his aircraft became separated from his squadron. After shooting down one BF-109, he saw a P-38 in trouble, so went to its aid and shot down another BF-109, reaching a score of eight destroyed and two damaged. One of his engines had taken serious damage in the dogfighting, and soon his second engine was damaged by flak fire. Curtis was forced to crash land on a beach in enemy-held territory in southwest Italy. 
He ended up being captured and was held for many months in an Italian prisoner of war camp. Curtis escaped before the Germans took over the camp after the Italian armistice. He was helped by his former Italian guards and allowed to walk away. He and other ex-POWs survived deep in German territory for many months until they reached the Allied lines. Afterwards, Curtis received a prisoner of war medal. With the war in Europe starting to come to an end, he was transferred to the Far East to fight the Japanese. There, he would fly the iconic P-51 Mustang long-range fighter. A few months after arriving, while flying his plane nicknamed the Bad Angel, he shot down his ninth kill, an armed Japanese Mitsubishi Ki-46-2 Dyna reconnaissance plane, on February 7, 1945. This now made him a rare kind of ace, having shot down an aircraft from all three of the major Axis powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan. But then, just three days later on that faithful day of February 10, 1945, while carrying out ground attacks on a Japanese airfield, he was to earn a more distinct and sad notoriety. For on that day, he was going to earn the dubious honor of being credited with shooting down a fellow U.S. military plane. On that day, Curtis and three other P-51 Mustangs from his squadron departed from a field in Mangalden, central Luzon. They were to perform a reconnaissance mission on a temporary airstrip being used by the Japanese on the southern tip of Formosa, Taiwan. When they didn't find anything, returned back, flying over the island of Bataan in the Philippines. Curtis and wingman Lieutenant Schmitka flew to the north half while Lieutenant Scali and Lacroix headed to the south. When Scali attacked an airfield on the Bataan Island, Curtis and Schmitka joined them. The squadron shot down two Japanese aircraft and shot three other enemy planes on the ground before they could take off. But now the ground defenses had been manned and Japanese anti-aircraft fire shot up into the skies. The attack resulted in Lacroix being shot down by the flak. Luckily, he managed to bail out in time and survived an emergency landing in the nearby sea. Curtis circled the spot to confirm the pilot had safely gotten out of the sinking plane. It was then that he spotted a large plane attempting to land at the Japanese airfield. At first, he thought it was a Japanese copy of an American DC-2. On flying over to the plane to investigate, he was horrified to see it was a U.S. Army C-47 Dakota transport plane. Initially, when he noticed the landing gear coming down and spotted the American markings, he thought it was a U.S. aircraft captured by the Japanese. He couldn't believe a U.S. transporter was landing straight into enemy territory. And despite him trying to raise it on the radio, as well as trying to make it veer off course by flying in front of it several times, it did not respond or alter its course. Unknown to Curtis, it had developed a faulty radio as well as being completely lost and was virtually out of fuel. And worse still, the Dakota's pilot did not understand what all the fuss was about, as he thought he was about to land at an Allied airfield, not an enemy-held one. So Curtis felt he had to take the drastic action of firing at the transporter by disabling both of its engines. Luckily, the Dakota's pilot managed to land the transporter in one piece on the adjacent sea. All 12 crew and passengers managed to get off the stricken plane safely onto a life raft before the plane sank. They even managed to rescue the shot down pilot Lacroix and brought him on board the life raft. With much relief, he circled overhead, offering them his protection for as long as he could. But with dusk quickly approaching and with Curtis's Mustang running dangerously low on fuel, he was forced to return to his base some miles away. The occupants of the life raft had to endure a night in the shark-infested Subuyan Sea. But the next day, Curtis returned, escorting a consolidated PBY Catalina seaplane that rescued all the survivors. It was only then that he discovered that one of the two nurses on board the Dakota was Fetlana, his date from two nights before. And in another twist, he was officially credited with shooting down the Dakota, thus earning him an American kill to his tally. Svetlana must have been the forgiving type, as they continued dating and after the war, they married on the 2nd of April 1946. They stayed happily married until Curtis's death on February 5th, 1995, just five days short of the 50th anniversary of him shooting down her plane. Big thanks to our sponsor for this episode, Last Day on Earth, Survival. Download Last Day on Earth via our link in the description below and play now.